everybody and good evening. I thought I would do a real quick video on one of the torts that seems to get everybody, whether you're writing an essay or you're doing um, a multiple choice for the first year law students exam, um, and those are our larceny crimes. Our larceny crimes are, they can be confusing. You have your larceny, your larceny by trick, embezzlement, false pretenses, and there seems to be no rhyme or reason as to how to figure it out. One thing that I have done here is, as you can see, we have a nice little spreadsheet here. Um, in this spreadsheet, what we have on the left-hand side are different types of mm, possession, custody, title. It's it's the what's going on. And then on this top part right here, we have now and later. And this is when was the intent formed? Was the intent formed? now or is the intent to still later so what you'll notice here is we have custody so if you get a fact pattern and you're presented with a larceny type crime and you have to choose whether it's larceny larceny by trick embezzlement or false pretenses and it says that the person took custody but then later is when they decided to go ahead and form the intent to steal. You have larceny. If the, if the person took possession of the object that they're discussing and they had the intent when they took it, then we have larceny by trick. Now, if that person had possession and no intent, to steal it, but then later formed the intent to steal that, then what you have is you have possession with the intent formed later, which will give you embezzlement. Then if it's title, and title is pretty difficult um, to, to kind of explain in a fact pattern. So generally when you're dealing with titles, you'll be dealing with um, bankers and money, or for some reason, I guess, if somebody decides to give you the title to their vehicle, um, if that intent to steal was formed now, then you have false pretenses. If they were given title and they decided to steal it later, then there's no crime. Most of what you'll be looking at will be the larceny by trick and embezzlement. And and the big key between these two is possession. And did the person obtain possession with the intent to take it, which is larceny my trick, or did they have possession and then after they had possession later formed that intent to steal? And that's embezzlement. So what I've done here is I've created a few multiple choice questions um, based on just some silly things that I did with a friend in class. I've got four of them here. They're all MCQ questions or multiple choice. And then at the bottom I have the answers. So what I want to do is I want to go through this with you and I want to show you how that chart that I had pulled up works. So what do we do? We go to the call question. I returned the outline that afternoon, which crime will Heather press charges for? So here we clearly have embezzlement, larceny, larceny by trick, or attempted larceny. So let's go ahead and see. Brandy and Heather were staying together at Hotel Pasadena studying for the first year law students exam. Brandy was so anxious to take the test that she forgot to bring her criminal law outline when she packed. Heather had amazing outlines. Brandy asked Heather if she could use her outline for the afternoon, and because Heather was such a good friend, she gave Brandy permission to use the outline for the afternoon. Brandy had no intention of returning the outline. So when I was given the outline, where was my intention? My intention was not formed later, it was formed when I got it. While studying the outline, Brandy spilled coffee on it, ruining the portion on theft crimes. Brandy decided to return the outline later that afternoon. Brandy returned the outline that afternoon. Which crime will Heather press charges for? Well, we're just going to assume that because we're all law school students, Heather's going to press charges. So the key here is to look. We have a theft crime, and we've got intention right here. We're looking to when we form the intent. So let's go back to that graph that we had a minute ago. Okay, so we're here at this this graph again. Well, it's not a graph. It's 
an Excel spreadsheet. Anyway, so when was, was, she, was Brandy given custody? Was she given possession or was she given title? So clearly Brandy was given the outline. So she was in possession of that outline. She was given it by Heather. Now, we are told that she had no intent of returning it. If she had been given the outline with full intention of returning it and then later spilled coffee on it, ruined the theft crimes and decided to keep it, we'd be looking at something different. But because Brandy had possession, she had the intent now, we're looking at a clear case of larceny by trick. Now, I know a lot of you are going to go back to this question, and you're going to say, but wait, Brandy returned the outline that afternoon. Well, I'm going to drag you down here to the first answer, because as you can see, the fraud violated Heather's legality of possession. So the change in circumstances, the return of the outline, doesn't change the fraudulent possession. So that's... A very important thing to know because this is a very common fact pattern you'll see on the first year law students exam. You'll have somebody taking something, forming the intent now or forming the intent later, but then giving it back before we're really told whether or not that person knows, should have known, but none of that matters because the mere taking of that, the violating of the legality of possession, that's all they want us to know. They don't want us to read into it. So regardless of whether or not Brandy returned it, has nothing to do with this. Brandy is a dirty larceny by trickster. So let's go back and let's look at number two. Let's call go to call a question. So Brandy posted it online, immediately sold it. Which crime will she be liable for? So here we have embezzlement, larceny, larceny by trick, and false pretenses. All right, so what are we looking for? We're looking for whether Brandy, how did she, did she get possession? Did she get title? What are we, where, how did she get this? And then we're looking for the intent. Was it formed now or later? So Brandy and Heather were standing together at the hotel for the exam again. Brandy was so anxious to take the test, she forgot to bring her criminal law outline when she backed. Heather had amazing outlines. Brandy asked Heather if she could use her outline for the afternoon. And because Heather was such a good friend, she gave it to Brandy. Brandy had no intent to keep her friend's outline because she knew how important it was. We all know how important those outlines are. But while studying Heather's outline, I realized that she could fetch a pretty penny online for this outline because it was so good. So Brandy posted it online and immediately sold it. So what crime are we looking at here? So we are looking at an intent formed later. So let's go back to our chart and let's, let's see what we're looking at. So it's basically the same as the first question, except this time Brandy formed the intent later. So we're going to look over here. It says later. We know that Brandy was in possession. It was intent. The intent was formed later. So what we have here is we have embezzlement. It's great. It works really well. So let's come over here. Let's look at the answers. I had Brandy had no intent to keep Heather's outlines. Brandy obtained physical control over the outline from Heather and then later converted it to her own use with the intention of permanently depriving Heather. Since this crime was a conversion by Brandy, a, right, a person in rightful possession, the crime is embezzlement. Had Brandy had the intent to convert the outline at the time she was given possession, it would be larceny by trick, which is what we saw in the first question. Because at that point, we're not looking at the intent formed later, we're looking at the intent formed now. So, let's go back up here to number three. We've got the same beginning. Let's look at the call. Brandy immediately felt bad and slipped the outline back where she found it and left. What crime is Brandy liable for? We have embezzlement, larceny, larceny by trick, and false pretenses. So, Brandy and Heather were staying at the hotel. Brandy forgot her outline. Heather has great outlines. While Heather was attending the Bracci lecture in the conference room, Brandy placed Heather's outline in her notebook, intending to take Heather's outline and use them as a study guide. Brandy knew that Heather wouldn't notice they were missing. Brandy took her notebook and was about to walk out of the hotel room when Heather walked in and began talking about how Bracci gave a great criminal law lecture. Brandy immediately felt bad and slipped the outline back where she found it and left. What crime is Brandy liable for? All right. Once again, let's go back here to what we're looking at in the graph, and let's look at whether we're looking at intent form now 
intent formed later. So did Brandy have title? No, there's no title to this outline. Brandy have possession? No possession. Did she have custody? Yes, she had custody. Does it matter when she formed the intent for custody? No. Now or later, it's still larceny. So if we go back to our question, we're going to look. Number three, the trespassery carrying and taking away of the personal property of the other with intent to defraud, permanently defraud, it's basic definition of larceny. Here, Brandy trespassorily took the outline with the intent to permanently, dep permanently deprive Heather. Although Brandy merely picked them up and moved them, a slight movement in any will way will suffice for movement as an element. And this is a ba basic fact pattern for the basic crime of larceny. And, and this is important to know because any small movement, any slight movement in any way is sufficient for a movement. And sometimes, and there are many first-year law students' multiple-choice questions where they try and catch you, and one of the choices for this is no crime, uh, hoping that you'll think that because they returned it, there's no crime. And we all know that, that just the smallest movement makes this crime. All right, so now let's go to the final question right here. Pretty much the same thing, the call of the question. Heather sold her outlines to Brandy. Which crime is Brandy committed? So they're both at the hotel. She forgot her crime law outline. Um, Heather had amazing outlines, which she sold online. Brandy needed to make some money to pay for the FYLC, so she told Heather that her outlines were outdated and wrong on all the modern holdings. Brandy told Heather she'd purchase them for her from 10 bucks when they were worth much, much more. Heather sold her outlines to Brandy. So what is Brandy committed here? So by selling them to Brandy, Brandy has obtained title. Because now she has title to the outlines. Brandy had the intent when she was lying to Heather about how crappy her outlines were. Now she clearly formed the intent now and gained title. So we're looking at here false pretenses. So let's go ahead and let's come over here. Let's see what we've got here. False pretenses. When one obtains title to the property by means of a false representation of a material fact which causes the victim to pass title of property to the defendant, he's guilty of false pretenses. Here, Branley falsely represented the value, a material fact, of the outlines to Heather, which caused her to pass the title of the outlines to Brandy. Brandy received title. Yeah, here's the sneaky theft crime. So this is the sneaky, sneaky one. Um, it is very hard for them to get title in there, so you're really going to want to make sure that you know the difference when you're looking at this. When you're looking at this right here, the difference between custody, the difference between possession, and the difference between title. I always found that I had the hardest in the possession area with intent now and intent later. Larceny by trick and embezzlement always caught me. But if you can remember that, and if you can burn this into your brain, possession with intent now is larceny by trick. Possession with intent later is embezzlement. Then you'll fly through those first year law students multiple choice questions and you won't have any problems. I'll go ahead and post this on top of this um, to my Facebook page so you guys can go ahead and look at them and you can go ahead and study them. If you'd like to see more larceny, let me know. If you'd like to see more multiple choice or more essays, uh, shoot me a comment, like my YouTube video. I'm new at this, so forgive me for being a dork. And yeah, I totally wrote these questions about me and a girl named Heather who I was sitting with when we were prepping for the FYLC. Needless to say, I was trying to be funny, and now I look back on it and really kind of made myself look like a larcenous jerk, so... Enjoy laughing in my, my, my poorly placed crimes here. Alright, have a good evening.